there's a little bit of a disconnect between cosplayers that have been in the community all along and then the people that are like, oh, it's hot babes in costumes. That's not quite what it is, but thank you. I think sexy cosplay for me has really made me confident, actually, and empowered me in anything that I do. And a lot of people assume that if other people do sexy cosplay, therefore I should also do sexy cosplay. Yeah. I think it's really empowering women of all shapes and sizes to go out and cosplay. It can take me up to a year, maybe multiple years, to make certain costumes, and like it doesn't get as appreciated as somebody that puts their boobs out. <laughs> so that's, that's a little bit frustrating. Cosplay was once a way to express fandom. Has it turned into a like-driven culture with a hypersexualized focus? Where do we draw the line on empowerment versus exploitation in today's influencer-driven world? And who are we doing it for? I spoke with four women in the cosplay community to get their take. We are meeting up with Angie today in downtown LA. We're gonna go walk around to some of her favorite fabric stores. Angie actually commissions costumes for other cosplayers and she creates them for herself. She usually cosplays Elsa from Frozen, so I'm very excited to meet this queen. Cosplay is a very personal form of self-expression for people. You know, a lot of us are drawn to it when we're very young and we're drawn to it because we're sort of insecure in our own skin. And I was desperate for somewhere I could be accepted and, and be who I really wanted to be. To me, I, I don't understand the point of dressing up as a character if you're not really going to like become that character. I'm constantly working on multiple things. Like, it's very rare that I'm specifically just working on things for myself. How is social media impacting cosplay? Social media definitely orients more towards the sexy stuff and the boudoir stuff and, you know, the skin-tight spandex outfits. And those are the people that have found that they can make a living on Patreon selling photos of themselves dressed as popular characters in their underwear. That image is what has become sort of synonymous with cosplayers. A lot of people who are new to the community are now seeing that and going, oh, okay, well, if I want to be a cosplayer, I have to start a Patreon and do boudoir. I think it's created a sort of toxic atmosphere. It's become very competitive. It's become very sexualized and it's become very antagonistic. It can be very frustrating for the cosplayers that don't focus on that. You know, I've learned a lot about myself and my own strengths and weaknesses through dressing up as characters that I relate to. Dressing up as Elsa has brought me out of my shell like I never thought was possible. Why Elsa? I have a, a sordid relationship with my sister. We've, we've had our ups and downs. There was a distinct moment in our lives where I started to kind of resent her and, and push her away. I went to see Frozen. And the moment where Elsa hits Anna when they're kids with the ice blast and, and hits her in the head, it struck me very heavily. The reason for that is when I was about six years old, my sister and I were playing outside while our family was moving. There was this little boy who lived across the street and my sister wanted to go. And I was like, okay, well, we've crossed the street enough times. like. I know how to do it, so we just make sure we look both ways and then I'll tell mom that you went over to go play with him. So this woman blasted through the stop sign and my sister went flying. And she cracked her skull. So they kind of pushed me to the side and nobody really told me what was going on. Nobody told me if she was gonna be okay. What I never told anyone I thought it was my fault. Mm -hmm. I thought that everyone blamed me. The thing that really struck me about that movie was seeing Anna's journey and her struggle of trying to connect with her sister mm -hmm. and cosplaying Elsa is very special to me because it's a way of acknowledging how far my sister and I have come and it's sort of my badge of honor and, and pride. What's one of the biggest changes that you've seen? Like it's all about mod it could look more like a model. A lot of it that I see is very sexual. How do I a king? Yeah. <laughs> if, you know. Is it king? Is it king? Nisha Mock makes a living as an artist. 
selling prints, custom masks, and other items she creates from scratch on her Etsy page. Cosplaying mainly as her own character, Houndmaster, Misha's found a way to make cosplay a full-time profession. What is so interesting about Misha to me is that you're an artist, you create, you cosplay, but you also don't shy away from doing boudoir. I feel like within our society, the idea of sexuality is very taboo, which I don't think it should be, it's very natural. So I don't think boudoir particularly has to be super sexual, but I do understand the lack of clothing within our society feels sexual, but I think we should open our mind up a bit to the idea of it. There's a whole art form to it that I don't think people quite see, but like the modeling aspect specifically with your body of every movement to get the right angle is very interesting. Patreon's really flipped it because there's a lot of people that are like model styles that are making a lot of money off of it. And how do people use it? The idea that people can subscribe to you either by project or as a monthly base, most cosplayers do monthly, and they can do different tiers and they get different rewards. Some of them have like private Snapchat tiers where you can see sexier things. And then I know some builders that do PDF files of how their build was made. I specifically kind of mix every, everything as always. <laughs> you can be multiple things and it's, it's okay to want to express that and still be an artist. Like that doesn't yeah. change it, it's wonderful. Truthfully, our world sees so much sex all the time. And like if women want to empower themselves with something that's kind of sexual, like, they should do it. Did you ever feel the pressure to do it more because the way the trends of cosplay are turning? If I didn't like it, I just wouldn't do it. Right. I enjoy it. Like I think with cosplay and modeling, you definitely have to look at being more sexy if you just want to do modeling. The culture is a very sexual culture. It started for men drawing sexualized women. So you, I don't know, like some people are really against the sexualized culture, but it, but it's how it started. It started with men drawing sexualized women. But there's definitely ways to do professional cosplay and not have to show skin if you like you could be a builder and I know a lot of people that do building full-time to me it was always about fun and craftsmanship but now they're making unbelievable stuff the process itself like as painful as it is it's so much fun I don't think people know how talented some of these cosplayers are Sai is a professional cosplayer who builds and sells accessories like Batman cowls and shields for other cosplayers with her husband Dakota through their small business. Meeting while cosplaying DC characters at Six Flags, the two find it's hard to turn their passion into a livelihood. You know, he's more of a perfectionist. I love crafting so much, but it's to a point where like I can't be on that level. But I think we balance each other out pretty well and we'd never get anything done. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts on like, what you like her doing best. I push her a little bit more than she's comfortable with because I know ultimately what's gonna get views and followers. She doesn't go full lewd. We haven't gone down the rabbit hole yet. It's like the only thing to be seen nowadays is to either do something the best, to do it lewd, or be to be the first person to do it. It's so much fun as a hobby, but it's interesting when you take it onto a professional level and then there's like a lot of pressure behind it to do lewd things, like when I was trying to move into more professional, like we, we both could clearly see what that would be like. So I actually started out in cosplay actually as an actor and I did theme park work as Wonder Woman and I very much fell in love with her. And this was back before Wonder Woman was cool. When Wonder Woman the movie came out, the lewd Wonder Woman came out and it hurt to look at. I think social media is putting a lot of pressure on cosplayers to be more lewd. Like who's gonna wanna look at a fully clothed superhero when one's right next to them is like in, in nothing. See them grow from being Supergirl into being like Supergirl without a shirt on, Supergirl in a thong, Supergirl just hold her tits. And the thing is they're chasing something that I'm not chasing. They're chasing those likes. It does put a lot of pressure on people because it's like, I'm not gonna get those likes if I don't yeah. do that. I'm not a spring chicken anymore, but like I've noticed that the younger community coming in, there's not that transition of like growing up and like figuring out like what you're comfortable doing. They just think that like the way you get views is you come into it like just basically naked. You're making a decision when you're 19 and <laughs> those pictures never go away. But is it still cosplay? 
Um, I get in an argument a lot about that because I think you're in lingerie and you've got Pikachu ears on. No, that's technically not cosplay. It's more of like a themed lingerie shoe. The reason why I don't go too loot is because it's not going to get me anywhere. What I'm going to be in like 15 years, like just <laughs> an older lady like, <laughs> please join my Patreon. <laughs> Like, I don't think people think things through. What's one of the biggest changes that you've seen since you started? People aren't doing it as much for fun. Yeah, people think that you do it for attention or there's a lot of like, oh, you're just doing this for your followers. So you should do like really sexy photos and sell all these like videos and like things like that. Tita's an amateur cosplayer who's just starting out. As a newcomer, I wanted to talk with her about how she's navigating some of the difficulties that the other cosplayers had laid out for me. I just started this year. I had two or three jobs working all the time, seven days a week, and being the background, being a server. I don't really put anything out as a server, but with cosplaying and Instagram, it just feels like, oh my God, I'm actually doing something and people are actually like watching me and paying attention to like, every little detail. If you could be a cosplayer or an influencer, what would you be? Probably an influencer. It is a lot of hours, a lot of time, but it, I mean, it's for me, it's worth it. But I'm glad that there's actually people watching and enjoying it and actually clicking through and watching my videos. It's just a great feeling that there's actually someone like, oh my God, that's so cool, you know? Um, people tend to do like quote unquote sexy cosplay. They think that like we don't have like feelings. Conventions are posting just to respect cosplayers. Cosplayers not consent. That's been going around a lot. Like behind the cosplay, behind the mask, you know, there's a person like we have feelings. Just as the Me Too movement responded to issues of sexual violence and assault, the cosplay is not consent movement came out of a need for awareness, for safety, and in some cases security for the players in the community. I think some people get the idea that maybe it's like, oh, you're in costume, I can come up and I can like touch your waist, put my hand on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. But there should be a consent aspect of like coming up being like, can I take a picture with you? Instead of just taking a picture, you ask, and then it's like, can I put my arm around your waist? Can I pick you up? If someone's in costume, they don't owe you anything. You have to ask them for a picture and you cannot touch them. You cannot like, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. just being decent to a human being because it's like you're no longer a human being when you're in a costume. The typical convention attendee is fairly immature, kind of socially awkward. A lot of those people have a difficult time separating fantasy from reality. And then you get the people who like have been sexually fantasizing about some of these characters and they want to hug you or kiss you or touch you in certain ways that you don't want to be touched by someone you've just met for the first time. And I've, I've had it happen to me, I've had it happen to friends. Like we've, there are guys who can't understand that a girl is just being polite. And all of a sudden they're following you around the convention and they're trying to get your phone number and they're finding you at the bar or the restaurant that you're at later that night and trying to join your table, stalking you on social media to like try and be your best friend or get a date or whatever it is. The cosplay is not consent movement came out of a desire to communicate to people that like those are not acceptable ways to interact with cosplayers. The issue of consent comes up in the cosplay world and it's come up a lot in social media and in feminism. I spoke to Dr. and Professor Shira Tarrant to get more insight on how social media and hypersexualized content plays into female empowerment today. When it comes to hashtag me too, sexual assault, sexual violence towards women and girls, it is as we know, never about what she's wearing. Women are assaulted when they're wearing sweatpants and veils and running clothes. And so consent is never about what she's wearing. Like, why can't a woman just be sexy, being herself or being powerful or being smart? Ultimately, I don't think that putting laundry on is empowering, you know, just being like a true, genuine person, being, you know, respectful to yourself. And if that's how you respect yourself, that's empowering. For me, embracing my sexuality and embracing my body is part of confidence. So having characters like the Dark Phoenix, who as she grows and becomes more confident, her outfit gets more skin tight and more revealing. But like, it's to me, I see it as empowering. 
But I think it's different for everybody. Sometimes I think wearing less clothing feels empowering in certain ways, and sometimes wearing more clothing feels empowering. But with the whole Patreon movement, mm -hmm. there's a giant group of cosplay women that are doing like very sexy like boudoir shoots and selling them. And it's like the first movement of women fully owning it because we've had stuff like that with like Playboy, but Playboy's owned by men and there's like a tear down system. And then the woman's the model where like this, the woman's the model, she chooses the photographer, she chooses what she wears and she chooses how she poses. And it's like, I think for that is super empowering that we have like this female takeover on those concepts. Ever since I came into the cosplay community, it's always been that way. A lot of cosplayers have lingerie or whatever. I try not to get into that. Like creepy photographers ask me, do you want to do nudes? I'll pay for it or whatever. I'm just like, no. If it wasn't working out for you, do you think you'd ever cross that line and get sexier? Um, if it's in a classy way, maybe, but that's still questionable. I still have to really think about that. The women in cosplay who want to express themselves in hypersexualized ways or in revealing ways or in sexy ways are entitled to do that as they see fit. The problem is when that becomes the one avenue for success because it excludes so many other possibilities for human expression and it reinforces very narrow stereotype gendered tropes about what it means to be female in this world. But if we fall into those stereotyped expectations, then people can demean us, they can think that we're less capable or that that's all we're capable of. At the same time, if we don't go along with that program, so to speak, then we might not even have opportunities for visibility or to have platforms at all. So we're damned if we do present ourselves sexually and we're damned if we don't present ourselves sexually. With so much to unpack, it became clear the only way to fully understand the issues at hand was to go to a con and dress up myself, though I barely knew where to begin. Are you excited? I feel like a phony right now. You're gonna have the best day. It's gonna be super duper fun. Okay, so I'm doing Black Cat. How do you figure out how to do the makeup for these things? Like, are you? So I try to think about who that character is and uh, their personality and how they would dress. Do I have to act her out today? I tell new cosplayers that you really should think in character is when people ask you for a photo. Everybody is different and everybody cosplays different. Mm -hmm. You know, no two people are ever gonna look the same, even if they're wearing literally the exact same costume. I think that's one of the important things for us as cosplayers to remember, because, you know, we do get a little competitive sometimes and we like to compare ourselves to other people. And it's, right. the fact of the matter is we're all different people and we're all interpreting these characters differently. I just feel like the stakes are so much higher for some reason. <laughs> Guys can't find me today. Don't go looking. <laughs> What do you think the most common misconception about cosplayers is? That we're a bunch of socially awkward uh, losers that should get a life. That we're all just a bunch of nerds. That's for nerds. They probably think that we're all a bunch of nerds, which is like not true, or we just do cosplay all day, but that's not true. It definitely has become pop culture, whereas it used to be a subculture. Are definitely looking and that's a weird feeling for me like I you know you don't notice when people are looking at you most of the time but like now I'm like very very aware of it and it's a little intimidating it's okay there's no pressure here it's the beauty of the small cons this is the power of Angie though and her like <laughs> extreme levels of confidence I just want everyone to experience it and understand how freeing and how much confidence it can build by just embodying a character and having fun and sharing that fandom with other people. Oh, we're taking a yeah. photo? Get it, girl, get it! Yeah. Get those hands out, yes, yes! Cosplaying Black Cat was super cool. This is my nightmare. She's fun, <laughs> she's sexy, she's romantic. 
But yeah, there were elements to being out on the con floor in full spandex that were a little uncomfortable. Like when you see a kid walk by or when you have the guy look at you the wrong way or when someone asks you, why don't you have any underwear lines? It's like, oh, that's not something you would usually ask someone. Black cat, you strike an awesome pose. <laughs> okay, like what? <laughs> So I can see where some of these issues would come up and be masked and be difficult to tell if it's something that makes you uncomfortable or not. It's really hard for us as adults to unlearn messages that we've gotten since we were born or even before we were born. And those messages are very gendered and they tend to be very binary where boys are taught to climb, build, explore, fall down, pick themselves up and go on. And girls are generally taught to adorn themselves, to be in relation with others, to be pretty. So it's not really possible to think that we're going to just emerge as a 22 year old and poof, those messages are gone. Women lose value the older they get, no matter what. Like, they don't see experience when they look at you, they just see age. And that's unfortunate because men don't have that pressure. Like, like I can play both sides. I, I'm a strong feminist. We should put women in realistic clothing, but I also understand the fantasy aspect. I think if we lost all of the beauty of costuming, that would be sad too. My issue is not with the people who do the work, but the broader systems in society that say, here is this narrow box about what it means to be female or what it means to be successful. And that narrow box has to do with conventional beauty, uh, hypersexualization, um, self-objectification. None of those things in and of themselves are wrong, but when we don't have broader options, that really limits everyone. I have a lot of work to do, but I mean, I work on my page every day. <laughs> So if I just keep continue doing that for five years or so, or even a year, I, I'm pretty sure my page will grow and it'll get there. And if it doesn't work out, there's always a plan B. What is plan B? I have no idea. Most of us came to cosplay because we felt like social outcasts. You know, we felt uncomfortable in our own skin and we utilized cosplay to learn who we are. I feel absolutely indestructible, like I, I can take on the world when I'm dressed as one of my favorite characters.